Right, so I'm going over some water crystallization reactions which are just basically complicated empirical formulae calculations. Check out my moles video if you're a bit uncertain, but I'm going to go straight into this assuming that you can do basic mole calculations. So 27.5 grams of copper fluoride with water heated strongly, 20.3 20 grams remain after heating, calculate X. So for me this is the most straightforward way of laying it out and you need to write what the two substances are at the top. So there's copper fluoride and then X lots of water. Right, so because I like using table format, that's what I'm going to do here. So I'm going to write mass to begin with. So the mass is given in the question. We're told that 20.3 grams remain after heating. The heating tells us that all the water has been driven off. So actually the mass of copper fluoride will be 20.3. And then the mass of water is 27.5. Take 20.3, which is 7.2. Okay, next up you need to calculate the MR, so you're going to use the masses from the periodic table, add together copper, and then add two lots of fluorine to that in order to get, let's make sure I've got this, it's going to be 102. And then what's the MR of water? Well, the mass of hydrogen is 1, there's two lots of those, so that's 2, plus oxygen, which is 16, so that will be 18. Next up, you want to find the number of moles. Remember to use this formula triangle here in these calculations. And remember, it's mass at the top, MR times N. Cover the value you're looking for, which is N, because that's the number of moles. And you can see that, therefore, the number of moles is mass divided by MR. Luckily, you've got both of those values in the table. So the number of moles of copper fluoride is going to be 20.3 divided by 102, which will come out at 0.2. And then the number of moles of water is 0.4. And that was calculated by doing 7.2 divided by 18. Right, at this point you need a ratio. So what you need to do is divide by the smallest number, which as you can see is 0.2. And divide both sides by 0.2 to get 1 to 2. So as a ratio, we have twice as much water to copper fluoride. So x in this case equals 2. Let's look at another example. So in this question, we have 9.66 grams of copper nitrate combined with water. They're heated strongly. 7.5 grams remain after heating. Calculate X. So I'm going to use exactly the same methodology as before. So I'm going to write my two substances at the top. So that's copper nitrate. Copying down the formula exactly. And water. I'm going to draw my table. And let's go for it. So the mass. Again, the water was driven off. So that tells us that 7.5 grams of copper and nitrate were present. So in order to work out the amount of water, I need to do 9.66, take 7.5, and the answer there is 2.16. Let's find the MR by adding together all the atomic masses of the various elements. So copper is 64. I'm going to add that to two lots of nitrogen, which was 14 times 2, and then six lots of oxygen, which is 6 times 16. And what, what I'll get there is 188. And then the MR of water is the same as it was before, which is 18. So that's two lots of hydrogen plus oxygen to give me 18. Right, the number of moles is mass divided by MR as, the, as before. And that is going to be 7.5 divided by 188 to get 0.04. Number of moles of copper nitrate. And for water, it will be 2.16 divided by 18, which gives me 0.12. What's the smallest number? Well, that's obviously 0 0.04. Divide both sides by that. And we have a ratio of 1 to 3. So in this case, x equals 3. Last up, we're going to look at this example. This is a really horrible example, so don't worry too much if you don't like it. Just make sure you're happy with the first two examples, because this is really nasty and it's unlikely they'll give you one this difficult. So we're finding the N in barium chloride combined with water. Remember anhydrous means without water. So let's look at what we've got in the question. We have the mass of crucible is 30 grams. We've got the mass of the crucible plus various chloride crystals is 32.44 grams. And the mass of crucible with anhydrous barium chloride is 32.08 grams. The crucible is just a little like ceramic pot that you heat stuff up in. So you need to take that away from your values because obviously that's not reacting. And like I said before, anhydrous means without water. So I'm going to start by looking at the mass of barium chloride. So what I need to do here is take 
30 grams away from 32.08 because obviously I can't look at the crucible mass and that tells us that 2.08 grams of barium chloride reacted. So there's our mass. I'm so scruffy at writing this. Okay, as usual, we've got our water. So we need to work out the mass. So all you need to do here is 32.44 take 32.08 to work out the mass of water. And according to my calculator, that's 0 0.36. Okay, MR. I'm reliably informed that the M, the mass of barium is 137. So I'm going to add that to two lots of chlorine, which is 35.5. And I'm going to get an MR of 208. So that's the mass of barium chloride. And again, water is 18. Number of moles is mass divided by MR. So 2.08 divided by 208 is obviously going to be 0 0.01. I don't know why I used my calculator then, silly me. And then for water, we're going to do 0 0.36 divided by 18 to find the number of moles, which is 0 0.02. Now, obviously, some of these ratios are really obvious, and you can just pull them out, so you'll see it's going to be 1 to 2, but I'm just going to show that dividing by the smallest number always works. And as you can see, it's 1 to 2. So in this case, n equals 2. I hope you found my video helpful. These are unusual more calculations but I did want to show it you just so I was nice and complete in my tutorials and I hope you found it helpful so see you guys